Variety is the spice of life. Let's add custom variants to our entities. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom variants to our raccoon entity. So what is a variant? Well, it's just basically going to be a different texture that is going to be displayed when our entity basically spawns. So our entity can spawn with sort of a normal fur, a red fur or a dark you know, variant. So basically, we're going to have three different variants and we're going to basically see how you can implement this. So in our entity package, we're going to right click new package called a variant. And then inside of there, we're going to make a new class called the raccoon variant. So we're going to right click new Java class called raccoon variant. Now I will be copying over the contents of this. This is going to be an enum, but you will soon see that this is pretty much just some boilerplate code that you can, I mean, pretty much just take Every time that you want to make, you know, a different variant, you can pretty much just copy this over. The only thing that you never need to change is how many, you know, different enums you have here. So you can see we have a default, a dark and a red enum values in this case. And they always have ace ascending IDs right here. So if, for example, you know, you have one another one, right, it might be, I don't know, blue, that would then be a ID three. So that should be fairly self-explanatory. Once again, this is just a, you know, we're sort of an advanced enum. So once again, the actual ones are separated by a comma. And then the last one is ended with a semicolon, just like any other enum that you've seen basically in Java always. Uh, the rest, as I've said, is pretty much just some boilerplate code so that everything here works fine. Uh, I wouldn't worry about this too much. You know, the really interesting thing is here just, you know, adding the enums here for however many variants you would want. Right, so first and foremost, we're going to change stuff in the entity class once again. So this will require, I mean, a few things, but it's not going to be too crazy. So the first thing we want to get is a new en entity data accessor, and that's going to be this one right here. This is this time of type integer, so a data type, a data ID type variant. And I've actually gotten this from the horse, if I'm not mistaken. So I can put in uh, the... I can press shift twice and go for horse entity, I believe. Actually, I believe it is just called horse, isn't it? Uh, there you go, horse. And this one has the data ID type variant as well. So I pretty much took this from, once again, the vanilla code, as I've said in the previous tutorials as well. You can get a lot of things from the vanilla code and just, you know, change stuff around and then you can use them for your own entity as well. So we're going to use this. And the first thing we need to do is add it to the define synced method here, the define synced data method. Very important that we have this. So this dot entity data dot define the data. This is the data ID type variant. And then this is going to be uh, what is the one? The default value is just going to be zero in this case. Now, we also want this to be saved in NBT data. So once again, I'm just going to copy this over. There's a read NBT data in this case, and this is the write NBT data. Um, we of course need a you know a method to get and set this variant as well so what we're going to do is i'm going to copy over the last four methods that we're going to need and i'm going to make it so that i have this down here so we're just going to do so that you know this is all for the variants in this case so it's going to be the finalize spawn the get variant method the get type variant and the set variant method so these th Three should be fairly self-explanatory. We're just getting the variant. We're getting the type variant in here. We're just setting it. So nothing too crazy in these three methods. The finalized spawn method is important because if we set down a raccoon with, for example, our custom spawn egg, then we want this to get a random variant. That is the general idea of for this method. And what we also want to do is we want to add something a little bit interesting to our get breed offspring right here. And that is going to be the following. I'm just going to copy over the contents of this the method as well this is up here it should be there you go and this should look like this so basically we're going to spawn a new baby right no worries there but then we're going to set you know make a new raccoon variant and then we're going to set the baby's variant to that random one as well so this is pretty much just taken almost one for one from this method right here just with the baby basically so no worries there Right, and now we still need to somehow make it so that it knows okay what different variants actually look like so this is going to be in both the model and the render because, of course, here we're just pointing to a resource location. But what we actually want to do is we want to make a map. Now, this is going to be something that for a few of you might look a little bit, you know, very complicated. However, actually, when you think about it, it should be, you know, nothing more than a little bit of intermediate Java here. So this is just a map that maps a raccoon variant, so our enum, to a resource location. Meaning that if we give this location by variant map, 
a raccoon variant, it can tell us the resource location of that variant. Meaning that if we, you know, put in default, we're just going to get the default raccoon. Put in the variant dark, we're going to get the raccoon dark. And if we put in red, we get a red raccoon PNG here. So this is pretty much all that there is to it. And then instead of just, you know, sort of hard coding it right in here, we, what we can say is we can say location by variant dot get passing an instance dot get variant. And then it is going to return the proper, well, the proper resource location for that particular texture. That is literally all that we need to do right here. And then in the model, we're doing pretty much the same thing right here. We're just going to say raccoon renderer the location by variant dot get object dot get variant. And that is it. Now, of course, we still need the two textures, of course, that would be uh, kind of important to also add. Now, those are going to be added in the raccoon right here. So resources, assets, tutorial, mod, textures, entity, raccoon, and then we have the raccoon dark and the red raccoon PNGs. There you go. And that is going to be all of the things that we need to do to add our custom variant to Minecraft. As I've said, once again, most of this is pretty much taken from the Force entity to basically see okay how we can change this and yeah i mean this is pretty much all that we need so let's see if it works all right we found ourselves back in minecraft so let's just spawn a few raccoons and there you go you can see they're all spawning with different codes so we have you know different variants here and if i actually feed a few of them with cucumbers then their variant should be well also in theory yeah random so i mean this in this case it was red as well so let's just get more here just for the sake of argument let's see maybe they're going to get another one there you go so this is going to be a normal one you could of course also take maybe the codes of the parents into account and then change it you know maybe make some crazy genetic code but for the time being i mean this is the general idea should be fairly self-explanatory as you've seen you can also get a few babies by just right clicking there there so there you go the babies also get different variants so that's really freaking awesome and that's how easy it is to add some custom variants to your entities now, there's one more interesting thing that I want to show that is not specifically for the variant. However, that is something that I've actually not added to the other tutorials. And that is going to be how the actual entity can look at you. So I'm going to just copy something over this. I'm just going to method in the actual model right here. Um, make sure that we paste it in correctly. There you go. And this is just going to make it so that the head is going to basically look at you. Now, what you need for this is also that one of your, like, basically bones, so the actual thing inside of a block bench has to be called head right here. Otherwise, it's not going to work, obviously. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. And if that is the case, right, then the head is basically going to turn and also animate and, you know, basically look at you. That's the general idea here. So this is pretty much what you need for this. I just wanted to mention this as well, because that is something that, you know, you might want to also have. All right, but that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.